In a small clump of pine trees in a field some 20 miles south of Atlanta, Georgia, is a weathered wooden church. It has stood here for nearly 100 years, and next to it is a cemetery. Many of the names on the headstones have been eroded by time, as have the dates. But we do know that it was long before the turn of the century that this spot was used. It was long before the automobile was invented. It was during a time when it was an all-day trip to Atlanta by horse and buggy. And yet, ironically, just a few yards from the front door of this abandoned church is the high bank western of the Atlanta International Raceway, one of the nation's super speedways, and where today the 10th annual Atlanta 500 will be staged at speeds in excess of 150 miles an hour. More than 70,000 racing fans have come by car, by bus, trailer, motorcycle, airplane, what have you, to watch 40 of the nation's hottest stock car drivers battle it out around this one and a half mile high bank track. I'm Bill Fleming, together with Chris Economaki, on a rather cold and kind of blustery day here in the sunny south. But we do have sunshine, despite the fact the temperatures are kind of low. This particular race is noteworthy because it marks the debut, competitively, of the Ford Talladega and the Mercury Spoiler cars. And to bring us up to date on the more technical aspects of today's race, let's join Chris Economaki, our colleague in the pit area. Chris? Thanks, Bill. The story going into the Atlanta 500, one of engines and one of tires. The Boss 429, Ford's newest racing stock car engine. The most powerful engine ever built. 600 horsepower, 623 pounds, and that makes it one of the heaviest ever built. 123 pounds heavier than the engine that won the Daytona 500 for them. And then there's the tires. The track record has been broken, thanks to soft tires. And now we find that the pole winner, David Pearson, along with Buddy Baker, Bobby Isaac, and Sweet Savage have got tires on that are going to wear out very rapidly. And they have an option. Start the race with the soft tires and make a pit stop in the early laps, or change to a different composition tire, but surrender their starting positions and start in the back. We'll know their decision in a matter of moments. All right, thank you, Chris, and we'll look forward to your comments throughout the race. Well, the decision has been made by some of the drivers to change the tire composition, which means they will have to move to the back. And in particular note is the pole sitter, car number 17, David Pearson. He set a qualifying record, but now he has changed tires. He has moved way back to the last car in the field. Also back there will be Bobby Isaac and Buddy Baker. This should be some start. And Charlie Glotzbeck has now moved to the inside pole in that red number six Dodge Charger. Also today on ABC's Wide World of Sports, we'll be taking you to Colorado Springs, Colorado for the World Ice Dancing Championship with Jim McKay and Dick Button. And we'll join Jack Kramer for action in the National Platform Tennis Championship in Scarsdale, New York. So it promises to be a big full day here on Wide World of Sports, and we'll be getting it all underway in just a moment with the start of the Atlanta 500. Lots back in six on the pole. Bobby Allison in 22 next to him. Elmo Langley in 64. Frank Warren in 80. Cale Yarborough in 21. And Paul Goldsmith alongside of him in 99. Richard Petty in 43. Leroy Yarborough in 98. James Hilton in 48. Buddy Arrington in 67. And then as we move way, way back at 37th spot is Buddy Baker and Bobby Isaac and then Sweet Savage and David Pearson. In addition to the fact that we have 40 cars of racing caliber on the track and a pace car, we also have a camera car. And in that car is our colleague Chris Economaki, who is going to be calling the start of this race from the camera car. And I think you'll get a kick out of it if you can hear it above the din. And there's the camera car, so let's go down to Chris Economaki. Chris? Thanks you are, Bill. This is going to be an unusual start with four of the fastest cars. Number 17, David Pearson. Number 13, Sweet Savage. Number 71, Bobby Isaac. And number three, the fastest qualifier of them all, Buddy Baker starting at the tail end. We're going into the steeply banked turn number three as the drivers are pressing their throttles to the floor, coming down for the start of this Atlanta 500. They're starting to pull away. Our car is going now 85 miles an hour, and the field is pulling away from us as the green flag is now being waved on the race. All right, very good, Chris. Great start, and Charlie Glotzbach sings into that first turn. Allison right behind him, and all the cars make it safely through that number one turn, and they head down the backstretch with Glotzbach in the lead, and Allison right behind, and Cale Yarborough moving up into the number three spot. 
also flying very fast is Buddy Baker in car three and David Pearson in 17. They've also moved uh, at least 10 or 11 cars out of the way as they come around to the end of the first lap. And flashing by the grandstand here is Charlie Glossback in the lead, Allison behind him, and Cale Yarborough closing in on Allison. David Pearson is now in 23rd. Buddy Baker's ahead of him. Baker setting the qualifying record after Pearson had set it earlier at 156 plus. He came back at 158. And the speeds are tremendous here as we move into the conclusion of lap number two. There is Cale Yarborough just alongside of Bobby Allison. And uh, Yarborough gets through to take second place chasing Charlie Glossback. Allison has dropped back to third. Cale Yarborough has second place. And at the end of the second lap, Baker has moved up, as has, has uh, David Pearson and Bobby Isaac. And now, Cale moves in on Glotzback, down the middle of the back stretch. And Yarborough takes the lead after two and a half laps. He started in the number five spot on the inside pole in row number three. NASCAR's all-time leading money winner, Cale Yarborough, driving the new Mercury Spoiler, has taken the lead from Glotzbach. Goldsmith is right behind Glotzbach. Allison is now running in the number five spot, and Leroy Yarborough has moved up into the top six. And now, Buddy Baker has moved up into the number nine spot. Glotz back, running second, but he is dropping just a little bit on each lap to Cale Yarbrough, who is really flying here. Glotz back, and there is Goldsmith. Goldsmith is on the inside low, and it looks like he's going to take Glotz back for second. They're right alongside, fender to fender, and right behind them is Bobby Allison, who'd like to shoot through there. And behind them, car number 98 is Leroy Yarbrough. The race got underway today. Chris Panamaki had an opportunity to talk to the pole center Charlie Glotzbach about the competition out on the track, and here's what he had to say. What about the competition, Charlie? Who do you look for to give you the most trouble? Well, there's uh, about six, I guess, out there that'll give you trouble. Uh, Pearson and Kale, Leroy and Bobby Allison and Buddy Baker. Paul Goldsmith, I mean, there are, just, there are several that will give you trouble all day long, that's for sure. They always do. And they are right now, as the very men that he was talking about are battling Charlie Glotzbeck for second place in this most exciting race. Uh, Chris, I don't know whether you've gotten the timing on the early laps, but they are really blazing. It's the fastest race we've ever seen here. Kale is streaking, but Buddy Baker back at number three is turning an even faster lap time trying to catch up.